All order. And we welcome everyone to tonight's meeting of Greenville City Council. Nice to have you with us. Uh, please rise for invocation by Council Member DeWorkin, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Let us bow our heads. This is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Finally, be strong in the Lord and, and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when that day of evil comes, you may be able to, be able to stand your ground and after you've done everything, still stand. We pray this. God, may you grant the armor of courage, faith and resolve to the people of Ukraine to stand against evil. Yes. May you provide comfort to the spouses, children, and parents of the men and women who have been given no choice but to take up arms against the abhorrent, interloping Russians. Mm -hmm. And may you tilt the scales of military and strategic might to the youth Ukraine defenders, most of whom have been torn away from their peaceful lives to take up arms. You have all the power. Mm -hmm. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic which stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Thank you. Good, good reminder of what's important. Amen. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member John DeWorkin. Here. Council Member Lillian Fleming. Here. Council Member Ken Gibson. Here. Council Member Will Brisington. Here. Council Member Russell Stahl. Here. Council Member Dorothy Dow. Here. Mayor Knox White. Here. You have the minutes of February 14th. Ms. Clerk, Madam Clerk. Yes, sir. We do have one Scrivener's error that we want to uh, mention to you in the minutes. Uh, conversation that was listed under item 15C should have been listed under 15D. We've made that adjustment oh. accordingly. Okay, with that change, any objections to the minutes? If not, they stand approved as submitted as corrected too. Thank you. We have a few folks who signed up to speak to us. We're glad to hear from you. We'll have some uh, speaking on some of the items on the agenda tonight. Uh, just We have a three minute rule, by the way, so in case you thought you were gonna Speak longer than that. You got to make some adjustments. We're glad to have you speak for three minutes. Um, first, Mr. Chris Daniel. We got the um, two Daniels. Uh, you're speaking together, or just or separate. Oh, okay. You each get three. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your way of getting six minutes? Anyway, I'm just, no, no. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> nothing, nothing think, about it. You snipped us out. Right, right. Okay, <laughs> thank you. So, uh, my name's Chris Daniel, and I live at 213 North Lead Street. Um, and I represent 27 households and 33 individuals who are opposed to the RM2 rezoning of the 10 Dothit property. If no direct access to Academy Street from the project can be provided, we are asking that the second reading of the rezone be postponed until the Parker Group, City of Greenville, Traffic Engineers, and SCDOT can have further discussions regarding access to the project. The residents in the neighborhood that live closest to the proposed project have worked together with the Parker Group to develop options for accessing the project, but as of today, no solutions have been reached. The current entrances and exits to the project take some vehicles to Dothit and ultimately all vehicles to North Leach Street. Both Dothit and North Leach Street are substantially narrower than all other streets surrounding the project by at least four feet and already substandard per the City of Greenville's criteria for street design. Gower and Ware Street are 22 feet 3 inches wide. 
Calhoun is 28 feet, nine inches wide. Bernie is 28 feet wide. Perry, that is, that is already in an RM2 zoned area, is 28 feet wide, newly paved with newly installed speed humps. North Leach and Dolthit are 19 feet, three inches wide compared to those streets. With no functioning traffic light at North Leach and Academy, a substantial but currently undeterminable number of vehicles leaving the project will turn right onto North Leach Street in search of easier access to Academy. They will travel deeper into the West Greenville neighborhood to Gower, Bernie, Ware, Calhoun, and Markley Streets, making the neighborhood less safe for current residents, less safe for the large group of children that play and live at the end of North Leach, less safe for parents who regularly walk or ride bikes with their children to and from A.J. Wittenberg, and less safe for walkers, runners, and bikers headed to the Swamp Rabbit Trail. The traffic study provided by the Parker Group in conjunction with the Ridgeway Traffic Consulting confirms this theory. And although we strongly disagree with the number of trips that the traffic study claims the project will generate, as an example, the study suggests during the peak AM hours, only 15 cars will exit the project. <coughs> um, that would mean that, or, I'm sorry, uh, 15 cars, that would mean that the most people that most people when most people are leaving for work and school from a project of 40 townhomes consisting of 2 bedroom units. With most likely 2 adult residents per unit for a total of 80 adults and vehicles, only 18% of the residents will leave the project. That being said, we do agree in theory with the study that traffic will increase in the West Greenville neighborhood. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, Adina Daniel. Hi. Hello. Um, I'm Dina Daniel, and I live at 213 North Leach Street as well. Um, on page three of the aforementioned traffic study under the subtitle, Trip distribution it is noted that half of the traffic destined for down downtown will make a right turn out of the project onto North Leach in search of signalized access to Academy at Markley via Gower Street. In other words, vehicles will travel through the neighborhood and straight to the AJ Wittenberg school intersections. We're not sure, however, why the study claims that only half of the vehicles leaving the project will turn right out of the project onto North Leach. There's no data to support this claim. We feel that the right-hand turns will far exceed half of the residents leaving the project because, according to this traffic study on pages six and seven, the level of service grading on a scale of A to F assigned to the North Leach and Academy intersection is currently a D and E for AM and PM peak hours respectively. And by 2024 will be an E and F, which is a failing score. The level of service grading as de defined by the traffic study is the level of service defined as a qualitative measure describing operational conditions within a traffic stream and their perception by motorists. Making the assumption that only half of people traveling out of the project will turn right onto North Leach when the light at North Leach and Academy is already providing a level of service that is near failing doesn't seem logical. Why would motorists choose to travel toward a failing access to Academy? They won't. I would like to reiterate that we are not opposed to the rezone if district, if direct access from the project to Academy Street can be achieved, or if the failing traffic light conditions at North Leach and Academy can re be resolved. We would also like to say that we sincerely appreciate everyone who has taken the time to discuss this project with the residents closest to and most affected by the project. That includes Drew Parker and Matt Alexander of the Parker Group and Shannon Laverin, Dorothy Dow, Paul Dow, and Lillian Fleming with the City of Greenville. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Gary Burgess.
Hello, I'm Gary Burgess and I live at 209 North Leach Street. I'm a professional engineer and land surveyor and the majority of my work is in the design of residential subdivisions. I'm here to express my concerns regarding the rezoning of the property at Dothit Circle and North Leach Street. I support the development of the property but oppose the rezoning to RM2 unless the traffic issues this development will create can be adequately addressed. If the property is rezoned to RM2, the plans develop 40 townhomes on the site. I applaud the Parker Group for commissioning a traffic study on the property. The, the study predicts 262 trips per day will be generated with a peak hour of 26 trips and states that the current traffic on North Leach is approximately 1,300 vehicles per day. This represents a traffic increase of 20%. I expect the increase will be even higher than the prediction. The basis of the traffic estimate is the Institute of Tra Transportation Engineers Trip Generation Manual, 10th edition. The national average used in this estimate includes data from larger cities with higher usages of public transportation than is typically seen in smaller cities where the use of individual vehicles is the dominant mode of transportation. The residents of this development will likely use individuals, individual vehicles exclusively. The report no notes that the developments generating less than 50 trips per hour are not considered significant tr contributors. While this is probably true in regard to the traffic on Academy Street, I completely disagree with this assertion in regard to North Leach. North Leach has a substandard paved pavement width. The street is also very straight in this block, which encourages frequent speeding and a high volume of cut through traffic. I feel the proposed driveway near the middle of the block will be potentially dangerous and create frequent conflicts between the existing traffic, both vehicular and pedestrian, and with emergency vehicles exiting from the West End Fire Department. The density of the development will be much of a much less concern to me if a sound solution to the traffic problems can be found. Here are some of the suggestions made by local residents in meeting with the Parker Group. Add a curb cut from Dothit directly onto Academy. Have the entrance and exit only on Dothit with a hammerhead turnaround at the end of the project at North Leach Street paired with a functioning light at North Leach and Academy. Have sole entrance and exit on the project on Dothit and create a five-point intersection at the existing light of Academy and Calhoun. Purchase a right-of-way or easement from Israel Metropolitan Church for sole entrance and exit onto Calhoun Street and, or re, strict traffic within development one way with the entrance on North Leach and the exit on Doth that pair with a fully functioning light at North Leach and Academy. Thank you for your time and consideration this important matter. Again, I support the development of the project, but I ask that you delay the approving the rezoning until the traffic issues can be fully addressed. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Bernard Stedman. Welcome. Thank you very much. My name is Bernard Stedman and I'm a property owner at 211 Gower Street, which sits extremely close to this current development. I'm not in denial or I do not. I, I do support the building of the structure, but I do not support where it is being determined that traffic should go at this particular time. Also, I would like to make it known that the property that I own, which is 211 Gower, there is a driveway between that particular area and 205, and that area should not be considered an in entrance or an exit as well. It is a driveway, tenants currently park there, children play there, and it would just not work at all. Also, I do have an easement for that particular area. It is, it goes, it's like 10 feet between 205 and 211, which is my property. And it would appear to me that a decent area would be, as previously stated, a curb cut to Academy so that proper, so that traffic could properly flow from that area. As you all know, that area does have two lanes going in each area. And it would seem like that it would be in a better position to accommodate the traffic that would be generated from this particular development. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. 
uh, Mr. Um, Ryan Brown. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Good evening. <clears throat> my name is Brian Brown. My address is 100 West Antrim Drive, uh, Greenville. Uh, I'm here on behalf of the Greenville Housing Fund uh, to speak in support of the rezone of the property along North Leach Street and uh, Douthat to RM2 by Council. The development plan for the property includes a community of attached single family residences that will complement the existing neighborhood single family character while also improve, improving upon the blighted and abandoned homes that have occupied the property previously. We are also grateful for the support of the neighborhood association. The investor and developer endeavor to include an element of affordable housing within this new community. To help bring these affordable units into the development, um, they have partnered with the Greenville Housing Fund to help navigate some of the complexities around affordable housing development and to ensure the affordability component appropriately addresses Greenville's affordable housing need, which will also mitigate traffic concerns. We look forward to working with the Parker Group and the investors to produce high quality housing in the heart of Greenville that includes an affordable component. Moreover, we are very excited about the conversion to ownership uh, that this project further represents. Creating affordable and workforce ownership opportunities in the heart of Greenville is very difficult to achieve, and we are grateful to the Parker Group and the investors for their interest, interest in this innovative approach. Finally, on a different topic, and on behalf of the board and the staff of GHF, our 55 partner and partners and stakeholders in the Greenville Affordable Housing Coalition, let me take just one moment to address City Council priorities and our deepest appreciation for your leadership on housing affordability in Greenville. Your commitment to housing affordability is making and will continue to make a difference for working families in our community. I wanted to take a moment to thank you. Very much. Thanks. All right. That's all the folks who signed up to speak to us. Um, we have a presentation, 8A. Nathan Galbraith. Okay. Our landlord. <laughs> uh, our city. Our city landlord. Are we, are we behind in the rent or anything like that? Is, is, has Shannon not paid up the rent this month? You are, you are fully paid up. I assure you. Mayor White Council, thanks for having me here this afternoon. I'm here on a, on a really fun mission to introduce you all officially to the Upstate Greenways and Trails Alliance. Uh, we call ourselves UGATA for short. Uh, we're a 501c3 founded right here locally, and we're located just across the street from City Hall, and we're focused locally on the Upstate. And um, we're made up of more than 100 local businesses and organizations that make up our alliance. These are a few trailside businesses you may recognize, all of whom are part of our alliance. And here are a few other businesses that, that make up the UGATA Alliance that are focused on fitness and tourism. And then you may be surprised to know that the business community has taken a huge interest in this organization, the focus of which is to build more active infrastructure in the upstate. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. And perhaps we're most proud to say that there are many neighborhoods in our city which have joined the Alliance because they also see the benefit to having more active infrastructure uh, here in Greenville. So this wheel of benefits is something that we created at UGATA to sort of show in a, in a pictorial way the benefits of having more trails and greenways in our area for physical and mental health, transit, getting kids to school safely, it's transportation that's low cost and clean, provides connectivity to our neighborhoods. Over on the community side, you'll see we have great identity and pride with our trails. If you think about how the Swamp Rabbit Trail has sort of transformed the identity of our community, as well as its responsible way to use land and also to promote equity, uh, because anybody, regardless of socioeconomic condition or, or geography in our city can get on a trail and use it for all of these benefits. And finally, for the economy, it really increases our tax base, it encourages new business, and also invites new tourism to our area. So that's the big reason, uh, just to back up for a second and explain why I think so many real estate related and other for-profit businesses are part of UGATA's alliance. 
It's because they see the benefit to new development and uh, in our city adjacent to trails. If you see what's happened with the Swamp Rabbit Trail, it's about a four to one value to properties that are not along a trail. Uh, so just as a, a quick example, Atlanta spent $600 million to build 11 miles of trail, the Beltline Trail, and they have already seen a 10 to one return on that investment. And a similar example in North Carolina's research triangle, they've built 70 miles of greenway there, similar to our Swamp Rabbit, and that greenway generates about $87 million every year in economic benefits to their community. So there is a very powerful uh, economic reason to do to build more trails and greenways. And I wanted to point out just quickly that uh, Ugata's mission is very uh, in line with the GVL 2040 plan. It checks the, the box of open space and the environment. It opens up a lot of opportunities for affordable housing. If you think about the affordable housing that's on the perimeter of our community and how do those folks travel to job opportunities that are in downtown and other parts of our city, it's very simple and affordable on a bicycle or an e-bike or the other modes of transportation that you can do on a trail and provides, of course, transportation and mobility. You got to, the way we function is we, we make partnerships between public, um, public institutions and private institutions to advocate for important projects and ultimately build trails and greenways. That's what distinguishes our nonprofit from some of the other nonprofits. We don't come and bang the podium here and, and ask you guys to please build something. We want to build it. And we try to put together the projects in advance. We try to find all of the access. We try to record those easements, find the funding, and um, even get to the point where we've site designed, permitted, and got the project to where it's ready to build. So we're really excited to partner more with the city of Greenville. We've already partnered quite a bit up till now, um, and we're looking forward to, to more partnership in the future. Excellent presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. It is exciting. All those examples from North Carolina. Wait a minute. Why do you didn't have ours in there? I think we <laughs> ours are. I, I've seen the one in the research triangle. And ours is better than that. So anyway, um, let's see. We have public hearing nine a. Who's who's doing that? Okay. Paul Dale. All right. Yes, sir. We have an abandonment for Winterberry Court. Winterberry Court is essentially the, the portion here for, to be abandoned as a, as a spur. Um, and you can tell there was a relic cul-de-sac right there. Um, main reason for abandonment is the uh, ability to construct a parking lot to serve the campus for Greenville Tech. Any questions for Paul on this? Okay. This is well, are, and we're voting on a resolution for this tonight. What are we? This is on here later, right? On the yes. docket later. Yes. Okay. I guess I'll have some questions then. Yeah, it's been, it's been the, it's kind of behind the old movie theater site. Oh, yeah. Well, that goes back a long time. They had been movie theater a lot. <laughs> so, so uh, I'll ask some questions later. Well, this is officially a public hearing. So anyone here to speak about this, ask questions, this is the time to do it. Seeing none, the public hearing is finished. Uh, 10A appointments. So, uh, Will Brasington, are you in charge of this tonight? I am. Okay. Mr. Mayor, members of council, it gives me great pleasure to nominate the following individuals for slots of service on our youth commission. Uh, some of these individuals may be with us in the audience tonight. And if so, would you please stand as I call your name? Jack Burns. Jack. Okay. All right. Julia Pasco. Hey, Julia. Stella Kahn. And each of these three individuals are students at Greenville High School. Okay, good. And then last but not least, we've got Braden Cooper. Looks like Braden can't be with us, but he is a student at JL Mann. Okay, those Thank nominations. You Thank you very much. Good to have you guys with us. Uh, all in favor of these nominees, say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Thank Congrats. you very much. Appreciate, appreciate y'all coming aboard the city. And Mayor, I think we have some additional members of the Youth Commission that are with us this evening. Okay. They'd like to go ahead and stand so we can recognize yeah, all them. Other members of the Youth Commission are here tonight. Okay.
We always hope we don't scare you off when you come to the council meeting. So, you know. Come back. All righty. Turning now to the consent agenda. Is that right? Okay. Yes, sir. All righty. To have a motion on the consent agenda. So moved. Motion second. second. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member DeWarkin. Aye. Council Member Fleming. Aye. Council Member Gibson. Aye. Council Member Brasington. Aye. Council Member Stahl. Aye. Council Member Dow. Aye. Mayor White. Aye. Those should, items received second. Should just leave. Oh. Second and final. Yeah. <laughs> left. It's all the action. Uh, everybody's leaving. Okay. That's right. We're left. gonna reverse our decisions. <laughs> you since you're gonna leave like that. We're gonna... It's like leaving the football game before they think it's over. It's the meeting. It's just kidding. Boy, you're gonna be surprised. <laughs> you were the headliner, Will. After you, they you all thought it. They've had their will share. That's right. All right. Did Brian leave? No, he stuck around. Okay. Fourteen <laughs> <laughs> A. An ordinance to rezone approximately 2.36 acres of real property located at Douthat Circle and North Leach Street from RM1 to RM2. Motion, please. So move. Motion and a second. I'm sure there'll be some discussion on this. Okay. Do you want to present something else? Or okay. it's, it's up to you, Mr. Mayor. I'm well, happy to just. Yeah, this is second. Okay. Discussion by council. Um, I had a couple of questions. And um, as Paul, st Paul didn't leave with the Youth Commission, did he? No, there he is. okay. No, Paul, I, I, I know I asked you this before, <laughs> Paul, but I just wanted to be sure. Leach and Calhoun are both city streets, city owned streets, or Calhoun Estate? Do you know? I'm sorry to surprise this on you. Leach is state. Calhoun Estate. Okay. Calhoun Estate, state. Leach is city. Okay, yes. Is that correct? That's what I'm hearing. Thank Says you. Eddie. Look at Thank Eddie Livingston here. Yeah, that's got some, talent. got some talent tonight. Good that's to for sure. Her. Okay, that's good, Paul. Good job. Good answer. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. um, and I, I see uh, representatives from the Parker Group are here. That's good, Paul. That's okay. all I had for Great. you. Um, and so maybe this question is posed to you. You're well aware of Mr. Stedman's property, his easement. <laughs> Um, and are prepared to work um, without, you know, not encroaching, but that's his property. You stay off of it and no construction shall be overlapping. Yes. You're, this is not a surprise to you. So I appreciate Mr. Stedman bringing that forward. Um, you know, I really appreciate the people that turned out to speak tonight and the people who Mr. Burgess and, and Mr. Daniel who took the time to meet with me and Shannon. Um, as I said to them, I am gonna support this project for the affordable housing component there are a couple, and, and, and there are a couple of things that are unique about this that really um, intrigued me from the get-go. One, that this is a local developer um, who came forward very early on, I know has the city's best interest at heart, has done a great job working with all stakeholders on this, and it's not lost on me how much time y'all have had in that, and I really do appreciate it. Um, two, this is a very unique product. I think, Brian, I was trying to text you real quick, but I think this is our first project where there's a component of um, rent to own, so to speak. We have not crossed into this territory yet, and this is our opportunity for affordability at a rental start, but building equity to own. And, you know, that's that's something we've really been striving for. I committed to, to the people that I met with um, to continue to work on the traffic challenges. I'm a sleeve roller upper. I think I told you that we have since we met, we have been working and, and, and um, you know, have some, for lack of a better term, irons in the fire, some things that could make this better. We know they're going to have to come forward with their final development plans. Um, so, you know, there is more work to be done to make this better. I appreciate the neighbors concerns that spoke today, but I am going to support this tonight because I do think it's a, it, it's a great opportunity for us with the commitment to continue to work with the surrounding people on doing the best we can on the, on the increase in traffic. Any other Yes, I, I want to say, um, I was not uh, aware of some of the extra concerns I knew about uh, Mr. Um, Stepman's property. So I knew we weren't going to go with that. But I just wanted to say to the people, because um, some of them mentioned to me they, they were not invited to the neighborhood meeting. And I just wanted to be clear that um, if they if they haven't put any signs out in neighborhood meetings, because that's why I hadn't heard very much information, the West Greenville Neighborhood Association is always <coughs> open. All of our city associations are, and we'll be happy to do that. I used to live on Douthat Street, so I understand the concern and the curbs um, with that. 
But I think um, the project that we need to work on is making sure that those little tiny streets and the um, exit and entrances of the people who live on Leach Street uh, and or Gower Street that we protect them, and I'm sure we will, but we need to make sure that that's done. I, I greatly support the project, but I understand living on, having lived on Dallas Street for several years, um, right after college, um, uh, before we moved back to the southern side, um, that it is a very tiny street, and um, oftentimes I always felt that Dallas should be a dead end and then start again because of, of the way it was done. But um, but that was years and years ago. And um, not only that, the drainage, there's some other concerns that um, the, the people probably could have talked about was probably uh, some of the drainage problems that they experienced right near the creek at the edge of Gower, at the edge of Dalton Street as well as Gower Street. So. I support the project, but I want you to know that we are going to be making sure that uh, we do it as much as we can to make sure that there's not a, a grave imposition. I am a little bit concerned that you ask about an exit uh, from North Leach because you have a red light right at Calhoun, which is maybe just not even seven, eight, nine hundred feet. And that the way the car is zoomed through there, to me, that would be a dangerous thing have another red light less than four or five hundred feet apart. Um, the neighborhoods, I'm not sure how that would work. And coming out of Lee, North Lee Street onto Academy, to me, would be much more dangerous than having to go back down the end of Lee Street and go out the other way. Because that street um, going towards uh, um, A.J. Wittenberg Elementary School, you really can get out that street easy. It is not highly travel except for in the mornings during school time and maybe sometime in, in late in the afternoon. But but yes, we need to work on that. And I thank y'all so much for coming. And in, any other comments from council? If not, the clerk will call the roll. Council member DeWorkin. Aye. Council member Fleming. Aye. Council member Gibson. Aye. Council member Brasington. Aye. Council member Stahl. Aye. Council member Dow. Aye. Mayor White. Aye. Fourteen A received second and final with a lot more comment and engagement. Fourteen B, an ordinance to annex approximately two point nine one acres of real property and zero point five two acre of adjacent right of way located at three four one zero Augustus Road, and to provide the zoning designation of C two. Motion second. second. Any discussion? Clerk, call the roll. Council Member DeWorkin. Aye. Council Member Fleming. Aye. Council Member Gibson. Aye. Council Member Brasington. Aye. Council Member Stahl. Aye. Council Member Dowd. Aye. Mayor White. Aye. 14 C. A ninth supplemental ordinance providing for the issuance and sale of a not exceeding 7,700,000 City of Greenville, South Carolina sewer system revenue bond series 2, 2022 in one or more series and other matters related thereto. Motion, please. Second. 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 Discussion. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member DeWorkin. Aye. Council Member Fleming. Aye. Council Member Gibson. Aye. Council Member Brasington. Aye. Council Member Stahl. Aye. Council Member Dow. Aye. Mayor White. I abstain. 15A, new uh, first reading. An ordinance to annex approximately 0 0.842 acre of real property and 0 0.424 acre of adjacent right of way located at 2901 East North Street and to provide the zoning designation of R9. Motion and second. Move to approve. Motion, second. Motion, second. But go ahead. All, all annexations, we want to hear more. <laughs> <laughs> It's always good. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Before you this evening, we have a couple of different annexations. And the first one is for a residential property at 2901 East North Street. The property would be annexed into the city of Greenville with a designation of R9. The property request when the annexation went before um, Planning Commission, we did hold a public hearing and it passed Planning Commission with a 7 to 0 vote and with staff's recommendation of approval. 
Mr. Mayor, first of all, I'm excited. I, I have another constituent in my district. That, <laughs> the house is empty. Say that. It's very exciting. They're excited. Yeah. Number every day. The excited. house <laughs> is empty. <laughs> you gonna bring some brownies or something to them? Or? <laughs> um, had we ever? Ran, I'm just curious. What? What was that? A request from the owner? It was. Yes, sir. Okay. The owner is here. Own somebody's in the back. Oh, oh good. Well, I have, brown, I have brownies for you. Okay. Welcome to Greenville. <laughs> you heard it. You got, you got any problems, any issues, that's the guy you go see. You don't call us. You call John DeWart. And I said the house was empty and he's here. Okay. <laughs> okay. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member DeWorkin. Aye. Council Member Fleming. Aye. On behalf of John. <laughs> Council Member Gibson. Aye. Council Member Brasington. Aye. Council Member Stahl. Aye. Council Member Dow. Aye. Mayor White. Aye. And thank you. 15B. An ordinance to annex approximately 31.938 acres of real property and 3.211 acres of adjacent right of way located at Conesty Road and Conesty Lake Road and to provide the zoning designation of RM1. Second. Motion. Is there a second? Do you want to tell, you want to tell us a little more about this? Hey, yes, sir. Thank you. This annexation request is before you this evening that would eventually lead to the development of the property for both single family attached and single family detached uh, residential on the property. Um, it is one of the last kind of green areas adjacent to the property that we have within the city or adjacent to the city limits. The um, property request did go before the Planning Commission and with staff's recommendation of approval and the Planning Commission upon public hearing did approve it seven to zero. Yeah, that's a big mm -hmm. call. And Shannon, Shannon, just one comment. The, uh, I think this is the first time in at least a decade that we've had more than one annexation on the docket and congratulations. <laughs> I'm, I'm so excited. Thank you. And I would say that um, John Hamlet and Austin Rutherford on our planning department team helped a lot with this one. And we have another request on next month's planning commission. So all the credit goes to them for their fantastic work keep, of what they're doing on behalf of the planning department. So keep them thank coming. You. Keep them coming. Yes, okay. sir. <laughs> all right. Clerk, call the roll. Council member DeWorkin. Aye. Council member Fleming. Aye. Council member Gibson. Aye. Council member Brasington. Aye. Council member Stahl. Aye. Council Member Dow. Aye. Mayor White. Aye. 15C. An ordinance to abandon a portion of Winterberry Court. May have a motion in a second first? So moved. Motion second. Second. Do you want to make a question? Yes, there's about discussion. I, so I emailed uh, Paul this morning and I said, I know you thought this one would go by without a question, I but. But I was betting on it. <laughs> my, 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 my veterinarian is number 634 right there. Oh. So, um, so, so Paul on, on the map. So what happens is, is they, they, they need the parking that's, that's designated for Greenville Tech. Is Greenville Tech represented here? We are lucky to have Greenville Tech here, yes. Welcome. Hi, my name is Jackie DiMaggio. I serve as the Vice President for Finance. Oh, well, Jackie, thank you for being here. Happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm routinely there with about a dozen other people with Myself included. Yeah, okay. So you know what I'm talking about there. So is it okay for them to use your parking there? And Absolutely. So, yes. How do we make signage, um, uh, you know, convey that? Because as a consumer, that's it, it looks like it's prohibited and people aren't pulling in. So they're starting to stack up on Pleasantburg, which is lethal, as you know. Yes. So any, I, we don't need to belabor it tonight, but if the two of y'all could work that out, um, I assure you the next time I bring Tiger for his haircut, I will talk to them about it. Fabulous. Blanche and Elmo would love to meet them. And then we'll have a safer passageway in and out of the vet's office and, and appreciate you sharing. I know these questions are getting out of control, but Dorothy, you just yes. told me a few weeks ago that you, I mean, you put your, didn't you put a dog down? No, I mean, not lately. That was a different dog. And it uh, was healed. He actually is here. That's a wonderful veteran. So Steve's still here. Uh, so who's going to call pulling the board? Yeah. <laughs> I was not even watching the veterinarian if she put her dog out, but I don't know. You know. And they're going to the vet. Oh, we have so really got a disabled dog, dog now. And if there's not enough park, yeah, well, you can tell them out of I used to go there. Yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Oh, this is an ordinance. I'm sorry. I thought Mayor, it was a resolution. That is a roll call. And it's, it's a resolution. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I thought it was a resolution. Mm -hmm. Council member, they're working. Aye. 
Council Member Fleming. Aye. Council Member Gibson. Aye. Council Member Brasington. Aye. Council Member Stahl. Aye. Council Member Dow. Aye. Mayor White. Aye. Okay, 50 receipts, receipts first reading. New business resolution 16A. A resolution to approve a sanitary sewer easement and trail access easement from the South Carolina Governor's School for the Arts and Humanities in the state of South Carolina for the purpose of conveying sanitary sewer and extending a public recreational trail network from the county square plan development site. Okay, we have a motion and a second just so get moved. Motion and a, and a second. And uh, Paul's back up to talk to us about, again about this. And uh, Shannon Herman is here for the county. Shannon, where are you? Okay, hi. You want to come up and feel free to, if you, I think you missed the first public hearing part, so we'll be happy. Oh, second, to. Mayor. I'm second, sorry. second. Thank I you. Second. I had a second. Okay, thank, thank you. you. We'll go ahead and, um, Paul, you want to introduce it again? or? Sure, I can do that. Um, um, come up with me if you guys want as well. Shannon's with me. So, uh, okay. Here's the uh, overall area of the of the resolution that we're looking at for uh, uh, two easements, one being sanitary sewer and one being a multi-use trail on the northeastern portion of the county square project that is going through Governor's School property. Um, obviously, we've got a, um, a, a trail access um, that will connect through Church Street down through um, into Falls Park and a sanitary sewer easement for um, uh, approximately 600,000 gallons per day. Here is a, um, a visualization of uh, where that limits of disturbance will need to be uh, in the existing conditions um, with a tree survey um, because trees have been a topic of conversation lately. Your next um, slide shows a little visualization of some proposed plantings to offset and mitigate uh, the removal of some of those those trees. Um, existing conditions and another visualization of uh, what a what a slope uh, landscape slope would look like for uh, trail access moving on down. Okay. All right. uh, magnolia trees have been um, identified in nursery. Um, I think mainly to uh, bring home the point that these aren't going to be saplings that get uh, replaced, that there are a source from uh, a nursery to provide 20 some foot tall magnolia uh, replacement plantings. And the next two slides have a uh, plant palette showing uh, various uh, color variations. Okay. Shannon, nice to have you with us. If you want to make a comment or two. Good had... evening, Mayor White and City Council. Thank you for having me here today. I am Shannon Herman, Assistant County Administrator for Greenville County. And we're really excited that we've finally gotten to the stage where we're going to begin infrastructure projects attached to this large development. Um, I think this one, you know, we're coming to you with a commitment uh, to really partner with you on this. Um, I want to thank you off the bat for your staff, for the amount of time that we have put together and been together over the last couple of years, especially Shannon and Clint and your teams. Um, John, thank you very much for the support and the time that we've had into this. Um, our interests truly align in this specific area. There's no conflict here. Um, we need this area to be developed to the same high quality and to the opportunities that we have to, to en enhance that in order to make our land sales work here, um, in order to make our development work here. So we absolutely want this to be beautiful. We want it to be open. We want it to be safe. We want it to be done with the highest quality. Um, and we have no issue making the commitment to replace the magnolias one for one um, as they need to come to, to meet the tree in inches, to meet any bees in lieu if we do have to hit that. Obviously, it's problematic to plant trees in a sewer line, um, but we certainly intend to make this a beautiful, green, safe, attractive area that's going to be well utilized. There is a connection um, from the, the northern side of our development and all the way down um, uh, Church Street as well. We're in alignment with the UDA study, with the HDR study, and we have done this in concert with staff. So we've really spent a lot of time to make this the best that it can possibly be. Also, we have with me tonight Danielle Handy. She's our project manager with Roca Point Partners, our partner in this uh, venture. And she can speak to any techn technicalities here because she's the brains behind the infrastructure. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Shannon? 
Shannon, yeah. I would just convey to you, we talked about this in the work session, that it's it's really important. There's some personal stakeholders in there that had a lot to do with the way it looks now, and they deserve a, a meeting on site to talk through the plan and, and, and what the commitment is. And yes, ma'am, we can have to facilitate that. We can absolutely work with Paul and, and Angie and anybody else who needs Great. to be involved in, that, in those meetings. Um, and I, I would also like to comment that uh, we, we haven't talked about an alternative route. I don't know if there is one. Uh, instead of cutting down those 40 foot magnolias, which are a wonderful buffer to Church Street. Um, but if there is not an alternative route, uh, I would highly encourage you to do replace one one to one and not not do the tax in lieu of option. Uh, that park is just too important uh, to to cut down all those trees um, and also use bigger trees. The uh, but Paul, you said that they're they're 20 feet. Uh, the slide says they're six to eight. So make sure that we're using trees that are comparable uh, to what we're cutting down. I'm sorry. Oh, six to eight diameter. Good. Okay. Great. 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 Thank you. Just a couple of quick things, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Council Member Dow stole my notes. That's exactly what I was going to say. I'm well aware now that there's, I mean, 12 months plus of, of collaboration between the two staffs, county and city. But what became abundantly clear to me in the past 14 days, however it happened, is that almost each of the stakeholder groups in the vicinity here uh, seem very caught off guard and very much in the dark. So a lot of, a lot of what caused this to be tabled was an effort to make sure some of the folks have poured the most amount of energy in this area could understand what's going on. So as council member Dow said, love to see that facilitated. I do, however, want to thank Shannon, uh, various other parties who worked, uh, diligently since the February 14th meeting to make sure that the various questions that lacked answers at the last hearing, you know, were provided to in spades. And to Russell's point, I thought the correspondence from the county to the city talking about exactly what type of tree replacement efforts would be there was a nice added touch, made the constituents I represent feel better knowing that was forthcoming. Final thing, do you know approximately when per what's planned here would lead to the disturbance to these trees to, to, the, to the nearest quarter of a year? Councilman Brazington, I'm going to let Danielle answer that question. Good afternoon, Hi. Councilman. To Hi. respond to your question, we're looking to begin in the May June time frame. So uh, ideally, we would be wrapping up with the work, you know, sometime in the fall or in the winter time. Of course, all of that is subject to permitting and a handful of other things, but that is our intent. So replenishment early 2023. That would be the expectation. Correct. Okay. Thanks. All right. Okay. All righty. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Ayes have it. 16B. Well, oh, 16B was uh, by consent to table that back in two weeks. There's no, if there's no objection, then we're postponing that so everybody can spend a little more time looking at that. 16C. A resolution to support the city's application for a federal land and water conservation fund grant for Gower Park renovations. So moved. moved. Second. Motion and second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Ayes have it. 16D. A resolution to consent to the First Amendment of the fee in lieu of tax and special source credit agreement between Greenville County and United Community Bank. So moved. Second. second. Motion, motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. 16E. A resolution of the Greenville City Council to adopt fiscal year 2023 priorities. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Let's just make sure people hear the message. Thank you. Mr. Manager, any uh, any news from you? Just or, a from couple items, city? Mayor. As you know, we're making really great progress in Unity Park. Um, playgrounds are really coming together, and they're going to be spectacular when they're done for the children of, uh, of Greenville. Uh, that work will continue into March. If you haven't been out there, um, it's really looking good. Uh, we have over 110 new and returning vendors who have submitted applications for the upcoming TD Saturday market. So that's really good. Looking forward to getting back out to some warm weather and attending the market again. 
I know a number of you had an opportunity to uh, to see the presentation on February 22nd, um, and our team participated uh, in the Greenville Gateway Charette, led by the team from Placerbia. I know the mayor has interacted with them. I had a number of council members saw the mayor there at that event. It's really exciting about the gateway coming into the uh, into Greenville. Uh, a lot of great uh, opportunities there. I think most importantly um, of note is the fact that that's a um, property owner led initiative there. We're participating financially in a small way, but those property owners got together and kudos to them to take the initiative to uh, to lead that effort. So I think that's gonna lead to some really good uh, development ideas in that area. And I think we're all excited about it. It's long, long overdue. We gotta formally uh, thank them, Shannon, for that, perhaps in some letter or something like that. Okay. Uh, I know you all keep an eye on the village of West Greenville. The streetscape project was just completed. That included sidewalk lighting and landscape between Mason Street and Burnett Street uh, along Pendleton. Our Unity Park undergrounding phase two encroachment permit has been submitted and we anticipate the boring uh, to begin uh, in the first week of March. So that's uh, progress. We'll be looking forward to the overhead utilities coming uh, down. Swamp Rabbit Trail bridges are moving along. Second span was placed on the Haywood Road bridge site. And you can see when you go down Lawrence Road, the site prep work that's happening there um, at, uh, at the Lawrence Road site. So it's that's- Fresh my memory, what, what are we telling people when the bridges should be up or when we- the, Well, they're the supposed to be done, Mayor, by the end of the year. They're supposed to be done, ready in the county to have completed their part of the work by the end of 2022. So a lot of a lot of a lot of work's going to happen over the course of the next uh, eight or nine months. Shannon, are you still here? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> Means a lot to us. Uh, I know council's very interested in traffic calming. Our operations crews installed five speed humps on Rockwood Drive, Frontis Street, Salt Stall Street, and Myers Drive. So continue to improve our um, traffic calming efforts. We also installed a high visibility crosswalk at the intersection of McBee and McDaniel Avenue. It should help out with uh, pedestrian safety. And at the Bohemian Hotel, as progress continues there, the Fall Street streetscape work is under construction uh, and the road closure was extended through today. So hopefully that uh, road closure will be, will be packed up if they're on schedule. That's all I have tonight. Okay, Thank you. all righty. Thanks. Pastor Council, thank you very much. Meeting adjourned. I mean.